Hi, have you ever thought about how easy it is to bring 3D objects in your motion design projects? One of the new features of After Effects 2025 is importing 3D objects into After Effects, allowing you to take advantage of 3D models in your motion graphic projects. In this video, I'll show you how to import 3D objects into After Effects and later demonstrate how to create captivating motion graphic using this feature. Let's take a look at the result we're gonna achieve by the end of this tutorial. And if you want to learn animation and motion graphics from the ground up, check out the Motion Hero Masterclass. This course by focusing on animation covers every technique that a motion designer needs to become a pro motion designer. The link is in the top right corner of the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on new videos. To use 3D models in After Effects, the first step is obtaining a 3D object. A simple way to find 3D models is by exploring websites dedicated to 3D modeling, many of which offer free options as well. For example, you can use websites like TurboSquad, CG Trader, Sketchfab, and Freepik. After Effects allows you to import OBJ, FBX, and GLB files as 3D objects. I recommend using GLB files as they store textures and materials more effectively than the other formats. If you couldn't find the model you're looking for in GLB format, no worries. You can easily use Blender instead to convert them into a GLB file. Blender is a free open source 3D animation software that can be downloaded directly from the source blender.org. After installing and opening Blender, you can go to the file menu, then import and import the file you have, for example, fbx file. As you can see, the file is imported into the scene. In order to see the material as well, I switch to material preview mode from the top right section. You can also change the color of different part of this object. For example, I want to change the color of its lid. I go to the material section, click on new, and from the base color, I change the color to red. For the rest of the model, again in the material section, I make it white. In order to apply a minor texture to the body of this bottle, I click on Add Image and click on Mesh Plane, then choose the picture I want. I select this one and import it. Using the Move tool, I align the objects to the surface of the bottle. Next, I use the Scale tool to adjust its size. By using the middle mouse, you can rotate the view. Let me move it closer to the bottom surface. Alright, now under the File menu, Export, I select the GLB format. Then I choose a directory, give it a name, and then click on the Export button. Well, after I imported the 3D file into After Effects, in order to create a 2D layer that matches exactly with the 3D layer, I duplicate the layer and put it in a separate comp. After that, under the layer menu, I select the auto trace option, make sure this option is enabled, and then hit OK. Now, as you can see, I have a solid layer that looks identical to the 3D objects that I have. I don't need this comp anymore, so I delete it. I move the 2D layer behind the 3D one. Good to note that in order to work with 3D models in After Effects, make sure to set the composition renderer to advanced 3D. And also to bring the uniformity of this layer's colors, I can make the lid red. To do that, I press the M button and duplicate mask one. I like the other ones and I apply the fill effect to it. And the fill mask section, I set it to mask three. Now I delete all of the points except for the top portion. It's much better now. As you can see, it matches the 3D object pretty well. Now moving on to making the basket and the cursor layers. I made these using the shape. 
For example, for the cursor, I set the film to white and I disable the stroke. And as you can see, you can create the cursor with these and to your preferences. And for the basket, I set the field to none and set the stroke to solid color with 5 pixels in width. And then I can create the shape for the basket, like this. You can change the basket to your liking. For transforming the 2D layer to the 3D in a specific time, for example in the first second, I trim the 2D layer and then put the 3D layer at the end of the 2D one. By doing this, the 2D layer instantly transforms into a 3D one. I limit the work area by hitting the end button. Now, as you can see at this moment, the 2D layer transforms into the 3D one. Well, in order to make the scene appealing, I create a background for it. And then I move it below all the other layers. Then I create a light. I set the light type to the environment. Then I duplicate it and set the light type of this one to ambient. And set the intensity to 70. Alright, after that I add a camera and hit OK. Now let's animate the 3D layer. In the beginning, I want this bottle to jump up a little bit. And then with the camera movement, I want it to fall into the basket. I select the bottle and create keyframe for its position. And after 15 frames, I move it over here. Again, after 15 frames, I put it in a basket. I make this keyframe continuous busier and using these handles, I can create a better shape for it. I create something like this for it. To make it pause here, I set the influence to 100 and the speed to 50 for this keyframe. By doing this, it will slow down here and then continue. I can also have some camera movements at this moment. About 6 frames after this keyframe, I create a keyframe for the camera as well. And on this keyframe, I move the camera like that. I move the 3D layer here in the basket. I also make these camera keyframes easy. I can also apply a little bit of rotation to the bottle. I hit Shift R. I create a keyframe for its orientation, and on the last keyframe, using the rotation handles, I can adjust the layer as shown. Very good. In order to apply a bouncing effect to the both basket and bottle, I'll use an expression that you can find in the comments section below. But before that, I parent the basket and the bottle to a new null object. I create a null, make it 3D, and move it exactly here below the basket. Then I parent the basket and the bottle to the null. Right in this frame, I create a keyframe for its scale. Then disable this chain icon. 3D frames ahead, I set the Y scale to 80. And again 4 frames ahead, I set it to 100. Now I ALT click on the stopwatch and then paste the bouncing expression here. Note that the last keyframe should be linear. I make these two other keyframes easy ease. Let's see how it looks so far. After that, it's time to work on animating the basket. Let's animate it. For the starter, I duplicate the basket and I rename it. Then I move it below all the other layers. I make it solo and delete the handles. I hit the U button two lines to access its shape. After that, I create a new null and make it 3D. And then put it here above the handle. 
Now I parent the bouncing node to this new node. Let's animate it. I go to the second four and create a keyframe for its position. Then in the second five, move it up. And on the second six, I move it out of the scene. I also make this keyframe Bezier. In order to have some curvature here, I can adjust the handles to my liking. And to slow down the animation here for this keyframe, in the keyframe velocity, I set the influence to 70 and the speed to 0. And for the velocity of this keyframe, I set the influence to 30 and the speed to 0. Now let's see how it looks. Looks pretty well. And to make it leave the scene faster on the last keyframe, in the incoming velocity, I set the influence to 70 and the speed to 0. Now let's give it a look. It's much better. To make the animation look better, I can create a keyframe for its zero attention here. I hit Shift R and then I create a keyframe and move the keyframe to the left. And here I rotate it by 14 degrees. And a couple of frames ahead, I set it to minus 12. Let's preview the results. I also make the keyframes easy. Let's have a look. Looks great. Well, to give this basket a 3D look, I can animate the handle and the back layer of the basket. For that, I select the basket and hit the U twice so I could see the shapes within this layer. I create the keyframe for the path of the handle right here. Then I hit U to see the keyframe. I move it below. And a few frames ahead, I move these two points to the left and these two points to the right. I also move these points up. Let's see. I can also have an animation for the back layer of the basket. To do that, I create a keyframe for its position. And according to this keyframe of the handle, I move this layer to the left. We also make these keyframes easy. Now I move these keyframes here, exactly where the keyframes for this null are. And I move these two keyframes to the right. Let's see the results. Alright, now I want to teach you an exciting trick. As you can see in the animation, the cursor is attached to the handle of the basket, and there is no misalignment between the cursor and the handle's movement. I used the special trick for this that I just learned myself. Well, let's go and learn how to do it too. Using the pen tool, I create an additional point on the handle. Then I hit U twice and select this path. Then under the Windows menu, I click on Create Nulls from Paths. After that, I click on Nulls Follow Points. By doing so, a null object has been created for each point of the handle, which follows its corresponding point. I delete all the nulls except for the one associated with the last point I added. As you can see, this null is linked to the points I made before and move along with it. Then I move the tip of the cursor to here and then parent it to the null object. By doing so, the cursor moves along with the handle of the basket perfectly. Let's check it out. Looks perfect. Alright, let me share a few more additional tips about this project with you. You can animate the remaining 3D objects in the same way and place them in a basket. To make the project stand out, you can add some shadow for the basket using a solid layer with a mask, then animate the opacity with keyframes. As for elements like the tank's box, it's all up to your creativity and personal preferences. The cursor, as I mentioned before, made using the shape tool. 
And for the motion of the cursor, you can create keyframes for its position, scale, and rotation, where the 2D objects transform to 3D ones and create the animation needed for it. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.